Hello guys, my name is Albin Grandal. I hope you're enjoying the conference. Uh, I've been asked to talk about a topic which uh, is a pre-study that we did on a simulator before we bought our own dynamic DIM uh, to 50 dynamic driving simulator from VI Grade. Uh, and I'll of course talk about that as well a little bit, but let's head into the presentation. And the title of the presentation is Developing Powertrain Bushings on a DIM 150 Dynamic Driving Simulator. Uh, before we get to that, I'd just like to introduce myself a little bit for you guys. My name, as I said, is Alvin Grandal. I work as a CA engineer within Vehicle Dynamics, and that is, of course, closely related to the simulator, which uh, means that it was quite easy for me to get a role as a product manager uh, working with the installation of the DIM250 simulator and also how we use it in our methods and so on. I also work with virtual development and verification, quite a broad uh, scope in a sense. Uh, and then you wonder, of course, about my company, SEFT or China Euro Vehicle Technologies. And we are an innovation company, an innovation hub uh, within the Geely Group or a center of excellence, as you can say as well. And we're working with creating mobility solutions for a different tomorrow. And that is, of course, quite diffuse. That is a lot of things that can fit under that. So I would like to just show you a video, video a little bit about what we have been doing before. So sit back and enjoy that. SEFT is an innovation center for the Geely Group. Since 2013, we've grown to keep some 2,000 people busy. Thinking big is in our DNA. Geely's founder, Li Shufu, started the group's first venture into making cars in 1997. Modular development and advanced virtual engineering enable us to deliver world-class technology to all Geely Group brands. Faced with the challenges of a fast-moving global market, our job is to always find a way. Our scalable, compact, modular architecture was first brought to the market with the Volvo XC40 and the Lincoln Co. 01. We've also developed a completely new 7-speed dual-clutch transmission, hybrid powertrains, advanced active safety features and top-notch user experience. New possibilities, a strong team spirit and different perspectives get us inspired. You'll find us in the heart of Sweden's automotive cluster and our technology in cars all over the world. Right, so that was a little bit about SEFT as a company. And then let's head into uh, the topic of our new driving simulator. So uh, you can see some pictures here of the finalized installation. Well, we have some parts on the, these pictures that are not finalized, but um, I went down to the lab and had a walk around uh, a little bit and showed off some of, of the installation. Uh, and also, we also recorded a video of the simulator moving around. So sit back and enjoy that video as well. So here we are in the Unit 3 by Yuli campus and behind me we have the driving simulator and you can see into it through these glass windows as a visitor and when we are doing tests we'll be pulling down some blackout curtains that we've installed. But I think it looks very neat as it is right now. But, uh, but let's head into the operator room. So as you can see we have quite a nice view just outside of the operator room here with the, with the river just outside and we can also close off these windows with two types of curtains, a blackout curtain and also a curtain that just creates some shade inside of here which we think is nice. We have the simulator inside of the, the glass windows here and the operator uh, desk is rotated a little bit to what you would normally have so it's a little bit of an unconventional setup. Uh, to get into the simulator we use the door over there and then a staircase going down to the simulator and I think we should head in and have a look at the installation. So here we are in the simulator room itself, I'm standing on the 26 ton base plate. Uh, we have a fully equipped Lincoln Co 03 car that has been converted into a cockpit that is basically fully equipped. We have active brake which means we can simulate the brake pedal feel instead of doing it in prototypes. Uh, we have shakers for getting that really nice texture, so like the immersion of the connection to the road. We have five screens which takes care of the mirrors and the dashboards. 
And another key feature of this installation is that we have an auto calibration system for the alignment of the reflectors and the warp and blend and so on. Uh, so basically we have excellent prerequisites here for developing uh, mobility solutions going forward. And yeah, that is it for the, the walk around. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, let's head back to the rest of the presentation. Right. So that was our installation. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, now let's dig into the technical topic of the day. So before we in invested in our own driving simulator, we bought time over at our uh, group of company uh, colleagues over at Volvo. And they have a DIM 150 installed, one of the first ones that was ever installed. And they have obviously done a lot of amazing work with their simulator. Uh, so we bought some time there. We had a pre-study and one part of that I'd like to talk about, and that is the powertrain bushing uh, study that we did. And I would like to thank VJ Ramnat, who is my colleague, I still is, um, working with the simulator here. He's done a lot of the work, the technical work in this uh, presentation here. So um, yeah, let's head into what we did. So the study that I'm going to talk about here is on the transfer function between the wheel contact patch to the top mount and so the acceleration, how that transfers, uh, which basically is the, the ride of the vehicle looking at the, the front axle in a sense. Uh, and specifically looking at how does uh, the powertrain uh, mounts and so on affect this uh, this transfer function. And the purpose was to investigate the possibility to use this study uh, going forwards, um, validating our requirements and trying out new bushing specifications. So what are we talking about then? Let's have a look at one of these plots right here. Um, the, these are just three curves. We will get back to them. Uh, they're nothing special in a sense, but they are just three transfer functions from powertrain, no, not from powertrain mount, from <laughs> from uh, via, uh, wheel contact patch to top mount and the acceleration in between there. Uh, so we'll get back to those, but here's some curves to have a look at. And the background to all of this is that we have some kind of development process. And I've drawn just five blocks here to portray a very simple uh, development process where we have requirement setting in the beginning. So we set requirements on what we would like our vehicle to behave like, and then we do some development of a prototype component. Uh, when we have that, we try it out. We try it in a, in a prototype car normally, and we validate that, uh, that the requirement that we set was valid, that, is, that it's good, and we can continue to uh, use that as a target. And then we go into the production of the production component and how to, how to design that. And after we have had that delivery, we go into uh, the process of ensuring that we fulfill the requirement. We do the verification of that requirement. And with prototype cars, you can try these components at the validation and the verification phase. But the simulator, it can be used even in the requirement setting, which means that we can probably cut some time in the middle here where we don't have to validate the requirements because we've tried the requirements already. And overall, we can cut time here, we can cut uh, prototype cars and so on uh, to some extent. But, uh, but yeah, so the simulator offers more flexibility and the possibility to try more scenarios and so on uh, than normal prototype cars earlier on, of course. So the scenario that we that we tried this on uh, was a straight ahead road with a sine wave profile in it, uh, created using the Open CRG tool, and this is where VJ's work came in a lot, uh, and also the the optimization towards the different uh, specifications. Uh, the amplitude of, well, basically the road amplitude, it reduces if you have a higher frequency. So we tried to keep the same amount of energy input for each certain case. Uh, and the vehicle velocity is assumed to be constant 50 kilometers per hour. So very well, well defined case. So the vehicle model that we used is car real time. Uh, of course, at this conference, there will be car real time, but, uh, and this doesn't show the car real time vehicle model. This is just a uh, figure 
portraying a one degree of freedom vertical suspension model. And what we used is a three degree of freedom uh, model. We have flex in the wheel. Uh, we, didn't, we don't have that in this picture here. And we also added a flexibly mounted powertrain. And this is what we get to here then. Uh, and that means that in the best of scenarios, the powertrain oscillates uh, together with the car to actually reduce the amount of vibration so, so that the, the ride gets smoother. But in a worst, can, uh, worst case scenario, uh, we can actually induce more vibrations by having a bad specification of powertrain uh, mounting. So what did we do here for this uh, study then? You, well, we created three completely unrealistic powertrain and powertrain bushing specifications. So they're not representing anything that we have in our vehicles or anything like that. But it was just to create three different points that we could try in the simulator and see if we could feel the differences between them. So we varied bushing stiffness, damping in the bushings, engine weight and so on. And that means that the engine might have been too heavy, might have been too light, but we created three different uh, cases. And so we just wanted to try these three amplitudes and we could do that because we had a very specific simulation that we could compare it to what, well, we drove the simulator using the vehicle model that we have verified in the exact same driving scenario offline. Uh, so we measured the output and we were then sure that we had the same thing in the simulator as in the offline simulations. And we had a loop around to, to make sure that that was the case. And we could do, do this because we had a very well-defined use case. So we had straight ahead driving, we had fixed given speed, and we were only looking at vertical isolation. If we would turn having a too heavy powertrain, the car would behave differently than what it would do in real life. So we limited ourselves from stuff like that. So the outcome then, we did a blind test. And we had these, as I showed you before, these three curves, and we tried them all at seven hertz. So in the feasible area of the tire model, we tried them all, and we could basically spot on, nail all of these three uh, um, configurations in the simulator. You can even see the picture here of what we drew on the whiteboard when trying it at Volvo. So we tried it without knowing what we were driving, and we specified that uh, proposal 2 was the best and it had even a dip in frequency because you you can feel the surrounding frequencies a little bit if it's a peak or not and proposal 2 didn't have that proposal 1 was sort of intermediate it had a little bit of a peak and that is the same for the measured data as well and then proposal 3 was the worst and this is what you can see in the plot and this this was amazing when we tried it. We are very happy with the outcome of the result there. The future work that we need to work on is to have the correlation just between the cockpit and the simulation. So we, we are sure that we get exactly the right thing, uh, that what we feel is exactly the right thing uh, towards the simulations. Uh, but for, apart from that, this test was very brief. Uh, there was one, just one of many studies we did at the Volvo facilities. Uh, we we didn't feel like spending too much time on this because it was so clear that this worked very well. And we just put that in our back pocket for when we had our own driving simulator, which we do now have. And this is something that we'll come back to in our driving simulator. So when it comes to what we work with then, future mobility, the focus becomes the rider and specifically the experience that you have, of course, with the design, uh, the interactions that you can have with screens and so on and what the services we provide are but a lot about the rider experience is about uh, the, the vehicle ride that particular ride and this is what we will use the simulator to quite a lot apart from all the other subjects that we that we can try in a simulator so but if i were going to this this presentation would be would be way too long so uh, this simple study we felt went really well we had a good outcome of it we could nail specifically what we wanted and this is part of why we invested in a simulator not all of it but parts of it so uh, i hope you enjoyed this presentation uh, let me know if you have any questions uh, give me a shout and i hope you enjoy the rest of the conference <laughs>